Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for that awesome welcome, Karina. And thank you, um, Stevens, for having me. This is just so surreal. As I was coming up um, to campus, I was just in awe of so much has changed. There are new buildings. and But I do remember that same feeling that I got when I stepped onto campus as a freshman and coming to visit, just seeing that view of just the water and New York City, it just brought it all back for me. So I have not been to campus in quite a while, uh, so it's great to be here and I hope to be able to, while I am here, to be able to tour and see some things and just to answer any questions and to meet you all. I, I really appreciate this, this time and the ability to be able to come back and to really be able to talk about something so important just in terms of the importance of service to community and how we think about you know, that, how that impacts us in continuing Dr. King's legacy. So I have dream, inspire, act, and change. These are all of the things that he really did, and these are all of the things that we can do to be able to continue his legacy and to create our own. I wanted to share a little bit about myself and my journey, right? So these are pictures of me, right? And just how I got to where I am today. Um, and so just... Um, as, as you think about you know, starting off into the world, just starting life as a baby, already as a, you know, a, a black girl, a black baby girl, already having you know, preconceived ideas put upon me, just being born, right? And so just starting life. When I was probably about eight or nine years old, um, yes, this is me in my Little House on the Prairie dress here. Uh, I don't even know if some of you know Little House on the Prairie. Um, but um, I wanted to be a lawyer when I was in middle school. And I wanted to be a lawyer because I talked a lot. I, I did very well, but I talked a lot. And my mother watched all of the law shows in the 80s and loved them. And I used to see the women, and they looked glamorous, and they carried a briefcase. And in the 80s, if you carried a briefcase, you were important. So I said, I need to carry a briefcase, I need to be important, and I need to talk. I was on the debate team, and so I said, okay, just a lawyer is what I will be. And it wasn't until actually my junior year in high school that I even found out anything about engineering. I had no clue. Up until that point, I was gonna be a lawyer. One of my math teachers who was the advisor for some of the clubs I was in, science, Olympiad, and math decathlon, and, and um, those different things, she said to me, do you know what engineering is? And during that time, we didn't talk about engineering. It wasn't a popular word. We didn't even really have STEM. At that time, they called it SMET. I'm very glad they changed the name because <laughs> that does, it was science, math, engineering, and technology. Um, and so we didn't, we didn't even talk about STEM, right? So she asked me, do you know uh, what engineering is? And I said, I have, I, I, I don't know. And I went to science high school. Anybody science high school? Yeah. Woo, okay, okay, we got somebody. And we did not, I mean, we did things in science, right? And, but we didn't name it, we didn't call it engineering, right? And so she, gave me the simplest definition and said that engineers are problem solvers. She said to me, I see how you tackle problems when we're working on projects, how you're really trying to come up with not only one solution, but multiple solutions to be able to find the best one, right? How you like to analyze things and look at them very critically. And she said, I think you would be a great engineer. So I said, oh, Ms. Dean, I'm." I'm going to be a lawyer. I'm not going to be an engineer. But the more she talked to me about it, the more I was intrigued. And I realized that many of those traits that she talked about, I thought about my childhood and how I, I was very inquisitive. And I did like to take things apart. And I was, my mother just said I was a busybody. But I joke with her now, I'm like, I was an engineer. 
right? And so my teacher just continued to work with me to find, you know, the resources. So, you know, actually having to go to the library and look up the different disciplines. And then I had the ability to come to campus and to talk to some faculty because I didn't realize once I thought about, okay, I'm going to be an engineer, there were so many different types. And if there were so many different types then, I can only imagine how many different types there are now, right? And so came to campus, talked to some uh, engineering faculty. All of them were men, right? None of them looked like me. And there was one faculty member who actually brought a hands-on project. And that was the faculty from the electrical engineering department. And that is really how I basically chose my major. This is plain and simple. And he actually showed me how a traffic light worked. And I thought that that was so impactful because it was something that actually helped society. It saved lives. And he showed me just the technology of how it worked. And I was just so in awe. And the other professors, the other majors, I know they're all awesome. But while they were talking, it sounded like Charlie Brown to me. It was like, wah, 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 wah. And I said, I have no idea what this is, so how can I choose it as my major? So that is why I chose electrical engineering, because he brought me something that I could touch and feel, and I could actually connect to how it impacted the world. No matter where you go in the world, there's at least like one traffic light somewhere, <laughs> right? So it is definitely making a difference. And that started my journey to come to Stevens. Um, coming to Stevens, I had the opportunity upon arriving to meet the two just most wonderful people when I joined um, the Step Bridge program. One of them is here, so I want to recognize her, Ms. Deborah Berkeley. <laughs> Any other uh, step, step people in the house? Okay, step. Okay, okay. So step really, really did help me. Um, you know, coming from science high school, you couldn't tell me nothing, right? I thought I was hot stuff. I was on the top of my class. Like I know I'm, I'm ready. And then I got here, and I spent just the summer before and I would be crying like, I'm so stupid. <laughs> I don't know anything. I would go crying to Debbie um, and the other um, counselor uh, was Jonathan. I would go crying to them and I would be like, I'm, I'm not gonna make it. I'm, I'm just, I'm not gonna be a freshman. I'm just gonna go through this summer program and go back home, right? And I would call my parents and I would be crying and they would be like, listen, uh, you gonna stay there. Or, <laughs> Or are you going to come back here? I have younger sisters. You will be here with your younger sisters. And so that was also motivation, like, I'm going to stick this out. Um, and so, but STEP really did help me in terms of not only just the family that uh, was created, but just the support and the encouragement was everything. It was everything that I needed for those times when I really just doubted myself. Um, and so I had a great experience here, um, as Karina mentioned, some of the activities and clubs that I was a part of on campus. You know, while you're here, you're a young adult and, you know, you, you're not fully taking care of yourself completely 100%, but it's like, this is the time where it should be the best time of your lives. Um, and I did have the best time, and you don't always recognize that at the time. Because while I was here, I was like, I can't wait to get out of here. But when it was time to go, I said, is it time to go already? The time just went by so fast. And I made so many friends that, for me, I know I would not have otherwise made, right? And I was telling Karina um, at the table that, you know, my mom would have this joke, like, if you want to really get to know someone, right, you eat with them and you sleep with them. Right? So being on campus, going to the dining hall, I was able to interact with people from all over the world, 
And I didn't have that opportunity growing up in Newark, New Jersey, in my communities where the majority of the people looked like me in my church, in my area, right? So when I came to Stevens, it was definitely a culture shock, right? But it was a good shock for me to have, and it really has helped me as I have been able to travel the world and interact with people, and I know who I am, I am confident, and so I hope that you all are, you know, utilizing these experiences, no matter where you're from, to be able to do that, because it is an awesome and a great experience. So uh, then we have professional engineer. And so when I got out of school, you know, it wasn't necessarily told to me, but it was just the mindset that you knew there's a certain way you had to look, right? There's a certain way you had to dress. And again, it wasn't spoken, but it's just something that was known, right? So my hair was definitely, as my mother would say, fried, dyed, and laid to the side, right? It was straight, right? I wore a suit to work every day. Um, when I left Stevens, I joined Anderson Consulting, which is now Accenture, which was great for me because I loved consulting. I got to travel, move around, still be in a busybody. I couldn't stay still, so that consulting life was just, it worked for me, right? So I wore a suit every day because in many of those spaces, I was the only woman, I was the only person of color, and many people don't talk about it, but I was also the youngest many times by 20 and 30 years sometimes, right? And so I felt like I need to look like a professional at all times, right? And this is what a professional does. Wear a suit, I did get my briefcase, so I carried my briefcase as well. But it was working that, you know, I began to feel some like isolation, right? Because there weren't many people. And I remember my time, you know, being here at Stevens and involved in different activities where I wanted to focus on making sure that there were more women and more other underrepresented groups that were exposed to what engineering was and just the great opportunities that you could do with it. So I decided that I was going to pivot because I really wanted to focus on the future and making sure that I was able to lift as I continued to climb. And in making that pivot, um, we have here now. So I'm an engineer, I'm an educator, and I'm an advocate for STEM. And that is what I do. I shifted out of doing the practical, really hands-on engineering and really wanted to focus on engineering education and how I could really be helpful in making a difference and making an impact in those who uh, weren't maybe as aware. And that's for students, that's for their parents, that's for even guidance counselors, because there were even many guidance counselors who were unaware to be able to give you know, students information about different types of careers. And when I was able to do that and make that pivot, I felt very comfortable in my skin and said, this is the place that I need to be. I still wanted to stay connected to technology, but I also wanted to make sure that I stayed connected to education. And a lot of, you know, service, when we talk about service to others, it, it really started at home, right, with my parents. Um, and I know my parents are watching, they couldn't be here. Hi, mom and dad. I had to give them a shout out or I would hear it later. Um, so that service started at home. They definitely emphasize, you know, helping people, right? You know, making sure that as you continue to climb, you don't leave other people behind. And then that was emphasized even more when I did get to Stevens by all of the organizations and clubs that I was in where we did do community service. So that really stuck with me. And I almost thought for a second about um, leaving engineering when I was here at Stevens, but one of my advisors, I was like in my junior year, and one of my advisors said, are you crazy? You, you don't wanna leave. You can do anything with your degree. So just finish. And that was the best advice because I have been able to do so many different things and my journey has just been awesome. And so I made the pivot from practicing electrical engineering to go into STEM education. Um, and I've worked with many um, nonprofits where I've been able to really do a lot of research. Um, this is just the collage of my life, right? So I like to show people that I am a human being. 
right? And that I have a life. Um, as Karina mentioned, um, I've been married for 21 years. Woo, I can't believe I'm the old lady who's been married that long, but my husband is an engineer as well. Um, he went to NJIT, uh, and we actually met in, in, through Nesby, Nesby Love. Um, and so, I mean, we have a family. We have 15-year-old twins, a boy and a girl, um, two more years, and I told them I brought y'all home together. You got to get out of here together. <laughs> so no, nobody left behind. Um, and so I am involved and engaged in a lot of different activities, a lot of different nonprofits that are really close to my heart. And one of the things I like to do is to be able to merge those with my work. So not only is my job you know, invested in STEM education, but the organizations that I'm a part of, I do that. And that is because of that you know, just innate feeling to make sure that I'm helping and doing that community service. And that really does, you know, speak to what Dr. King talked about in terms of being able to make sure that we're not leaving others behind and that we're helping. Um, and that is really how I live my life. Um, the many opportunities that I've had have taken me all over the world. And just as I said, being here at Stevens really exposed me to being able to mm -hmm be with people from all over the world. Now when I travel, again, I walk in, I'm very confident in my ability and those things that I know that I am able to do. And so I can remember the first time that I went to China, I brought my parents with me because I was like, oh my goodness, I'm so nervous. I'm going to China, I've never been here before. So, and I wanted to also, you know, just kind of pay it forward to my parents, like, you know, just because they're your parents doesn't mean that you can't serve them, right? And, and pay it forward back to them for all of the sacrifices that they have done for you. So brought my parents to China with me. Uh, we had an awesome experience, but it definitely was different. You know, when I got off the plane and I was in the airport, I felt like Beyonce. I was like, uh, okay. <laughs> Oh my goodness, everybody wanted to take pictures and you know, it's just very different, right? So you, know, you have to be able to experience a lot of different opportunities. You know? So if you haven't had the opportunity, please make sure that you travel, go see the world. That is one of the other things that Dr. King talked about, not only in our communities, but all over the world. So, you know, like I said, this is, you know, just a collage of my life that I like to share and let people know how I'm able to merge just my job and the things that I do with the love of service and also the love of giving back. One of the other opportunities that I was able to have, and Karina mentioned it, was being a triple AS if then um, ambassador. And so with that, there were 120 women who were selected um, to be ambassadors and go out and talk to um, girls and also boys in high school and middle school just about STEM and careers and also giving back in community service. And we had the honor of having these 3D uh, life-size statues created for us and they were on the National Mall and they put them in some of the museums um, in DC. So that was a real great honor um, there were people from all over who came to talk to us about what we did in our journeys and just to see like little girls and little boys wanting to take pictures with you. I'm like, who would have thought like an engineer was like cool, right? I felt like, oh my goodness, paparazzi for an engineer. Like I would have never ever thought or dreamed this. But being able to be this ambassador has also helped in me being able to give back in terms of that community service and giving back to make sure that people understand how you should be helping others. You may not realize it or think about it, but your impact of what you do can affect and reach someone and you may not even know. So this was definitely a great honor to be able to have this opportunity to give back and show people, especially from the community that I was raised and came from, like, if I could do it, you could do it too. Like Karina, I'm first gen as well. Um, and so being able to go back and show other little girls, other little boys, you know, other underrepresented groups, 
that the, this, these are careers that are possible and you can attain them. If you work hard, you have support and you have encouragement and you believe in yourself, you can definitely do it. And one of the things, you know, when we think about, you know, Dr. King and his, you know, community service, it wasn't just only going into the community and helping people, right? And that's some of the things that we think about. It's also helping people who are in your family, right? Helping those who are around you, making sure that you encourage them. So his legacy definitely still is, you know, impactful today because there is so much that we need to do. So much going on right here where we are, and then also so much going on around the world. Within the role that I have at Amazon, um, I lead um, global education programs. And I get the opportunity to travel around the world and see some of these communities. One of the things that I love is that we're trying to make a difference and an impact in communities that really need it. So we're not just out just spreading resources and you know, giving funds and money where they're not needed, but we wanna be able to make a difference and giving back. And so I really love the fact that that is rolled into my job and what I do and it's not separate. So that's the other point that I wanna make to you as well, is that whatever it is that you're doing or you're going to do, try to make it something that you love. Right? You want to get up every day and get excited, and that's what I do. I get up every day, I'm very excited about just what's going to happen, what's going to be new. I get to work with school districts, I get to work with universities, I get to work with companies, I get to work with country leaders. And so find something that you love to do and you get excited about. That is another form and part of you, know, you being able to give service and to give back. One of the projects that I recently had this past uh, last summer was the ability to be able to go to Ghana. And so with Amazon, we had about 40 uh, volunteers who we brought to Ghana and we brought educational resources to um, this small town um, in Accra, Choco. And this town, the students, many of them were not in school, right? So, there was a woman who has a nonprofit called Basics, um, and it stands for Brothers and Sisters in Christ Serving. Again, serving, that was the whole point. And her mission was to try to um, really be able to convince many of the families within this community about the importance of their kids being able to go to school. She connected with Amazon, and was able to um, have us come. There were many meetings that took place, but we were able to do that in August and to go. And one of the things that I was so um, just in awe of is just the kids and how much they wanted to learn and how hungry they were to be able to learn new things. So we were able to bring educational resources for them in terms of technology and for them to understand just more about the cloud. We were able to bring them Wi-Fi in some areas where they didn't have it. And so I was there for about a month and I got to really see the impact of many of these kids from the first day that I stepped foot there until the last day that I did not want to leave. Right? It's still serving, it's a part of my job, and I love the fact that it's not only my job, but it's something that I love to do as well. So I do all of these things in service, and I'm connected to uh, Dr. Martin Luther King's legacy in this way. He talked about dreaming, he talked about leading, making change, and inspiring. And all of those things that he talked about then are still impactful to me. I continue to dream, I continue to want to inspire, I continue to lead, and I continue to want to make change. Those things are very important, and I just hope that some of the things that I have shared with you just have made you even think about how you can continue to continue his legacy in your community, in your family, just in the world, wherever it is, so that we can really, thank you so that we can really make an impact on 
um, making sure that his message does not go in vain, right? So it is for all of us, it's up to all of us to be able to do our part to do that. So I'm really excited that even today you all will be partaking in community service events. I mean, that is so important as we think about his legacy, as we think about how far we've come, and even as we think about how far we have to go, right? And we won't do that, you know, in a silo. We won't do that alone, right? We'll have to do that working together, getting to know more about each other. And that is really what it is all about. So the last thing that I'll just share with you is um, the picture on the far right um, are some of the kids that I worked with in Ghana. Um, and they were just so excited. Every single day I came into camp, they came up to me, hugged me, squeezed me. Um, they love taking pictures. Like, can you take our picture? Can you take our picture? And they love like watching them. Um, and then the picture in the middle is from one of the exhibits um, for the If Then where these little girls said, can you please take a picture with us? And I was like, you, you want to take a picture with me? And they just were posing, and they were just so excited um, that they could see another woman who looked like them and just some of the things that I was able to accomplish and I was able to do, right? And then the last picture, these are my twins. Um, I had to work in Paris. I know, it was heartbreaking. <laughs> I had, to, I had to work in Paris, and um, I got to bring the twins with me while, while I was working there. I worked, they enjoyed, um, and they got to celebrate their 15th birthday in Paris, right? Never would I have ever thought, you know, in terms of opportunities, you know, like this to be able to present to my family, taking my parents with me to China, taking my husband and kids with me to Paris. They also came to Ghana with me as well. So that is really important to me, not only to emphasize that community service, but to also make sure that I'm leaving a legacy and showing my kids and having them involved as to why it's so important. Because they are so privileged. I tell them all the time. So the fact that they were able to actually go to Ghana as well and see some of the things that I talked to them about really impacted them. You know, it's, it's slowly wearing off from August, but I know that it still is in there. Um, and they appreciated it so much. They got to work with the kids in the camp and to do service. And that is really important that we make sure that it doesn't stop with just ourselves, that we pass that down to generations of how important it is to do community service, to serve. Um, and so this is why it really makes a difference in terms of how we get together, what it is that we do. And we continue Dr. King's legacy. You know, one of his quotes is, you know, it's not about how you're gonna help yourself, it's, it's about how you're gonna help others, right? And he talked about this beloved community, right? This is a beloved community, what I'm seeing right here, right? And how are we able to spread that all over the world for, for us all to understand that we're all human beings, we're all alike, for us to be more empathetic to each other, for us to be more compassionate to one another. So think about that as you you know, continue the rest of your life as you do your community service projects, you know, today. Nothing is too small, right? When you think about it, sometimes when I think about service and what it is I want to do, it can seem like a lot. Yesterday, um, myself and my daughter, we volunteered at United Way, and we were putting together kits, moving kits, for um, those who, ha you know, are without homes and they were able to get housing. Well, they don't have anything to put in these houses, right? So people donated, even if it's one thing, one thing from everyone in this room, how many kits could we make, right? And how, how many houses would that be able to help for those who don't have homes, right? So think about it as one step at a time. I know often it can seem very overwhelming, overwhelming. But if we do our part, everyone do their little part, it can make a huge impact, a greater impact. So with that, I want to thank you all for having me. I really appreciate it. It's been great. <laughs>